Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to a very special Trolling World Logic. We're doing another Let's Watch. And joining me tonight, Pumpkin, what's happening? Came back from the dentist to find out I have to get a load of fill a load of fillings. So yeah, I'm just gonna get drunk and watch a shit film. And Kitch, what's up? Ah, just about to watch just the worst film I could possibly imagine at the moment. So uh quite understandably I've got beer. Hold on, the worst film imaginable. I didn't know we were watching Pearl Harbor. All right, uh, to introduce our special guest tonight, um, James, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, how's it going? I'm all right, got a cold and whiskey, so yeah, good times and a short uh, film. Yes, and someone with a little bit of knowledge about what we're about to watch here, Miles, what's happening? Hello oh, no, there, wait a second, am I second billing to James here, the B team of the League of Nerds? God, that's terrible. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> How are you doing anyway? You alright, guys? <laughs> Yeah, oh, we're doing grand here. So just to let everyone know, the usual preamble about doing commentaries, I think it goes without saying uh, the views we're going to express will be our own and not those of the copyright holders for very obvious reasons as we go on. Because their views are shite. Yeah, honestly, to be you really fair, have to I prepare yourself. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, you really have to prepare yourself for this film. It is awful. It's only awful, um, like, film-wise put together and uh, the way it flows. It's awful because it is so dangerous. So I don't think, if you've not seen it before, you know, just mentally right now, prepare yourself. I think okay. the, uh, the funny thing is, I'm sure at least one of the people that worked on this film realized that even though it's AIDS denial, you could use this film to prove AIDS exists because it's been put to film. Okay, everyone, and just to let you know, we are indeed watching House of Numbers, so if you have your copy of the film right now, how you can obtain it any way you want, we're not going to advocate or not advocate any method you've used, uh, get the film to timestamp 00, zero and hit your play button now. Uh, yep, that's, you should see your knowledge matters, which I think Fuck it's those a good... guys! <laughs> They tried to see me and him. He's a twat. Fuck him. <laughs> is this just going to be your commentary, Miles? I think so. It, this is like three years of anger. Uh, that's probably just going to erupt tonight. So, yeah, just screw this movie. Oh, and if anyone's, uh, like, obviously you've all found it now because there's shit tons of copies on YouTube because they have no problem putting this everywhere. They're bastards. Okay, um, well, I think you'll be the... Can you give us a little bit of, do you know any background to this film, how it came about? Or? Um, I do, um, but I think it's probably best that we go with the film first, because there's certain bits and certain people uh, that will come out and then it will all fit together. So all you need to know is that it's a AIDS denialist documentary, and that actually exists, and it was written and starred and directed by a guy called Brent, called Brent Leon, Brent Leon, Brent Leon. Before he used to do this film, this AIDS denialist film, he was doing what well, he was going to do a film about AIDS and HIV being invented by the American government. So this is the kind of people we're dealing with here. Oh, we might as well bring in James. What do you have to say so far on this? I love this film. I think it's a masterpiece of... Uh... <laughs> cinematic glory it has some very important points that which all which all takes a heart really this is why yeah. i'm second billing on the league of nerds yes <laughs> God, let it go james let it go and pumpkin give your early opinions on this what you know about it so far i can i've just the idea of aids denial infuriates me because all i can think is the people that would are dumb enough to listen to this are the people who are actually probably suffering from it. And fucking assholes that smear this shit, they should just fucking get it and practice what they preach and die off. Yeah, but the, the very sad thing is that quite a lot of them actually have. Okay, fuck you for making me feel bad. And kids. There's actually a really awful story. There was an AIDS denialist. Um, uh, magazine back in the early 2000s, like Alive 1990s. And well yeah, and unfortunately, it's no longer around anymore because everyone died of HIV. Most of them. Okay, and like these, 
And like these guys speaking right now, what is any other connections, Miles? Like this guy, Michael Gottlieb or whatever his name is. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not really 100% sure about uh, a few of the people at the moment because uh, they went around basically with a camera and just basically quote mined the living hell out of people. So I, and there's just so much in this documentary. It's really hard to, you know, focus on certain things and then get to the bottom of them because it's quite hard. Oh, fuck this guy. God, there he is. Friendly on. Uh, so he's the star. But yeah, hang on, sorry, I'll let him talk. might say I'm a dick. Oh, like say, now that I've actually watching this, I see why you did your opening part to the series in, in a graveyard, Miles. Oh, was... yeah, did no one get that? Yeah, that's the whole point. Like, it was a really serious, like, uh, uh, film, and he starts in the graveyard. It's just morbid as fuck. He knows what the cause of the film would be if people paid attention to it. Oh, this brilliant, because is... people on the street don't know, therefore, no. I was just going to say, this is kind of Ray Comfort style tactics yeah. he's going with, Neil. It looks like he's taken a few lessons from Ray Comfort, or is it the other way around? You know, uh... I pumpkin. I'd love to see them going to Belfast, Northern Ireland, asking these questions. Here, yeah, what's the difference between HIV and it? Fuck off or buy me a beer, you cunt! And quote mine the fuck out of them. Are there any actually legit scientists interviewed in this? Uh, yeah, no, they're all legit. Uh, you could even argue that Duisburg and all the rest of them are legit, but Duisburg. for the most of them, he just quote around them. Okay, that seemed like a perfectly valid statement to me there. Yeah. And here we have a no one putting her opinion forward. I've lost the video, by the way. Yes, uh, I uh, was just about to say, my video's gone. That's a sh that should be it back. Oh, it's back. back. Do you see what I mean it, when I said he just jumps to random places that have nothing to do with anything? I mean, yeah, I see what you're getting out there. I love that. Why isn't there a cure in sight? Why haven't we cured the fucking flu, you dopey bastard? Because it's difficult. Viruses are assholes to fix. Yeah, the thing, the context of these quotes would be handy and like the date and when, who's speaking and why they're speaking. This is 
very interesting that Brent shows this because later on, doesn't he go on to say that this is being caused by ACT? Yep. I think what he's doing is he's sticking it on early so that later on when he bullshits, if anyone says you never cover this, he says, oh, watch the start. Oh, Kerry Mullis. Oh, that's the one he's nearly every AIDS denialist we've encountered. They always bring up his name, don't they? Yeah. Didn't he also uh, claim he met, he talked with a space leopard? Space a raccoon. A space space raccoon, raccoon. Like raccoon. raccoon. What? Yep, you know, Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy. But great. So, yeah, Space great. Raccoon. <laughs> he, he also denies uh, climate change, doesn't he? Or he uh, did. I, I don't know if he does. I don't know that. But it wouldn't surprise me. He's a little, a little lost in the head. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure Wanker. that's what it was. Hey, it's Peter Douchebag. And why do you call him that, now, Kitch? Peter Douchebag basically is the Andrew Wakefield of the AIDS uh, denying community. He is their patron saint. He is the scientist who is slightly credible, saying that no, HIV isn't a thing. And it's ridiculous because he's been shown wrong over and over and over and over again in fact he has what was it the deuceberg test or whatever james do you remember this when concordance was testing us he he believes hiv exists he doesn't believe it causes aids um yes yeah, sorry that's what that's what think. yeah um yeah his deuceberg test is ridiculous because it pretty much everything fails at the first to fucking find a cure why would you study something? Probably to try and fix it. Bollocks. Well, that just seemed like different folk from different backgrounds giving their view. Yeah, and that line of, oh, if you go to a different country, it's going to mean a different thing. I'm fairly sure if I was to go to any country on earth and say, I have AIDS, they're probably going to know what I'm talking about. No, they're referring yeah. to back in the uh, mid to late 80s when we weren't really quite sure what it was. So then they had like um, a set of, uh, well, it's not even that, it, it's basically how far do you need to be gone to be classed as having AIDS? Oh, yeah. There's I, I that, get that. And then there's it, also the, um, in some places where we, before we had the test, people would just generally look at someone and then say, it's more than likely you have AIDS, which is a terrible way of doing it. But you're talking about literally, this is like mid to late 80s. This is before we even knew what we were dealing with. Oh, yeah. But they're quote mining it to make it look like this is how they're viewing it now. Oh, yeah. No, this this, uh, this movie, I mean, Brent Leon and other people in this movie are time travelers. They go back and forth all the time, depending on what suits them. And they're editing not only to say that it's current, but it's that it, that we have no idea what these is rather than, you know, be technical to make it seem less technical than it is. Well, yeah, all they're basically doing is um, poisoning the well. They're making it look like we don't have a clue what's going on. And it's 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 pure danger. This movie. Words change over time. That's hardly a shock, I think.
So I can see all these um, HIV, well, these HIV positive guys here. Are they denialists as well, or? Um, oh, no, I think is, what they're doing the here is they're, they're saying, so how dare these people get anything because they have AIDS, oh, the hypocrisy, the shame, the terror. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, it's gotten better. better. The idea that people should get some form of reimbursement to help them deal with a condition. Oh, the terror of that. If only you fucking... Uh, it, it's just the stupidity of the idea that we should just fucking let all these people die because they have a disease. That's, that's probably because it's a massive issue in your country, and they're trying to take preventative measures. Mes eh, preventative measures. Yeah, it's sick and sad to give health advice because you know it makes me feel bad. Yeah, and the fact that they're saying it's a shame that oh we have to tell them to use condoms. The reason you have to do that is because for fucking years the Catholic Church was going out saying oh don't use condoms, they don't help. This is another example of them time traveling. So nowadays, this isn't really a thing. We have relatively cheap HIV tests. So, yeah. Notice how even in the quote mine, this is probably someone who has AIDS. And in the date on that document, yeah. it says 1986. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This guy is actually a massive AIDS denialist, um, and he's one of the people who, yeah, has been promoting this idea for the past, I think, 15, 20 years. He looks and sounds like a cunt. <laughs> Again, why are you... Just because... Yeah, normal people don't understand it. I mean, it's like, I could have the flu tomorrow and someone asks me what exactly is the flu and I can't answer them. Yeah, it's... It's 
the Ray Comfort style of documentary making. Yeah, don't show the questions you're asking and quote mine the fuck out of whatever response you get. What it could, it could be, and that is. Whoa, what? What's this criteria they keep going on about here? It's, it's the one that they showed just before, so like losing weight, etc. It was before we had a, a cheap, reliable test. So and it's it a differential was, it was diagnosis. So when you say, do they, do they meet certain criteria? Basically, it was a sort of sign of, there's a good chance this person has AIDS. Based on this very old, outdated method of looking for it. It stopped being used in the 80s. She's another one who's made a living off AIDS reporting. Kerry Faber, one of the people who um, was talking about suing me. Oh, do you know this post Faber. bike noise? Watch, look, post. <laughs> Such charisma. Again, did you notice the timestamp that it had there? He was only up until 1992, so this is still fairly early on. Uh, just when was this movie actually made, House of Numbers? I think uh, 2005, but don't quote me on that. It might be a bit later. No, it might be later. I think it's 2009. Yeah, it would need to be, because there was one earlier that said up to 2008, so... Oh boy. It's just weird because when it f focuses on whatever that, it all seems to be done in that kind of very 90s style soft focus, a lot of it. It's 2010, I've just looked up. Now, this is actually really sad. This is Kim, you, you just saw then. Um, Kim's oh, story is actually. <laughs> yeah, but before, um, Kim's story is actually really sad. Um, she's someone who's tragically not with us anymore, and she actually died of AIDS and she didn't die well and her life story is awful like her ex-partner tried to have her murdered and then she got in with Scientology and she and then she got in with these lunatics and it, when she got full-blown AIDS it, it was horrific for her and her family I mean she lost her mind it was awful Kind of a bit of a fucking personal question to ask randomers in the street. Fuck her! Boo! That's ah, a the bollocks. I think I should be playing the Imperial March in the background right now. See Liam, does he just 
deny a- anything at all. It's just a denialist full stop. The sky Liam isn't real! Is, is a very, very peculiar person. Uh, I, I don't think there's a conspiracy out there that he doesn't believe in. And he's, there's, definitely, there's definitely something... A, a secret sadness going on there, I think. Uh, the, the, the thing about this bit as well, this is really interesting. Um, what they're talking about is the likelihood of your test being inaccurate and the likelihood of the person taking the test actually being uh, HIV positive. If they're in a high risk group, that's basically what it is. So, for example, if these tests are, what is it, one in a thousand uh, chance of being crap, they give a false positive, then if you have two people, one of them is in a low risk where one in a thousand will be HIV positive, and the other one is in a high risk where 99 out of a thousand is going to potentially ha- is going to have HIV. Then you say, oh, well, you've both been positive. What are the chances of you being actually positive and you being actually positive? And it's a math thing because you think it would still be the same. It would be like one in a thousand for each, but it's not. It's um, half a chance for the low risk person because there's one in a thousand that they're HIV positive, but there's also one in a thousand. That, uh, that it's a buggery test, but for the second person in the high risk, it's one in a hundred of it being a faulty test because it's one in a thousand that the test is faulty, but it's 99 in a thousand that they're going to be HIV positive. So this is what he's playing on. And even still, it means relatively nothing because we do multiple tests. So the chances of them being incorrect and then, uh, yeah, listen. Because there's the slight chance that the more accurate one could be false. If you take three possibilities and they all point in the same direction, the chances that they're correct is much, much higher. If you just take one, the chances could be as low as 50-50, which is just disastrous for a disease like this. You've got to remember as well that these people doing these tests are out on the street. Um, you know, uh, they won't be like, not to slag them off, they won't be like the up there doctors, the people like physically making these things and everything. They're the people that out there helping people. And this fucker coming here, like giving them trip up questions to people who where English isn't obviously their, their first language is just incredibly you know it, it, it's manipulative it's deceitful he's doing this on purpose and you'll see it, it's later not on. even that he's trying to ask questions of a scientific nature to someone who's clearly volunteering their time for what could very well be a non-profit organization to try and help uh, diagnose and prevent these diseases as if they are top of the range scientists who should know the ins and outs of every part of this test and it's also wasting their time and their resources. Yeah, and the time they've spent trying to sort this prick out who's just doing it for the sake of doing it, they could have probably helped two or three other people who really needed to find out. Yes. I think the issue I'm finding with this is they're basically slagging off all these tests because, oh, there's multiple stages to the tests. If I want to find out if it's raining anywhere in the north, and stick my hand out the window and it doesn't get wet. Well, I know it might not be raining here, but I still don't know if it's raining anywhere else. You have to take multiple results. You have to check shit. And these tests are put through quality control. Oh, hell yeah. It's not like they just make the test, they are good enough, they actually do go out and check to see what are the limitations of this test? What is the chance of a false positive, false negative, etc., etc.? Generally, they will have people who have already had the disease and are known to have it, 
they will test, well, is it always showing up positive for them? Shit like that. Video's dead. Back. Yeah, because the whole method this film seems to use is scientists saying, well, there's possibility of errors and we didn't know things earlier. Therefore, <laughs> AIDS doesn't exist. That's what the conclusions they're drawing from it. You, you can do that for anything. To change it for anything. Bollocks, you beat me to it. It's like the idea that we wouldn't know absolutely everything about a new disease as soon as it showed up. Fucking shocking. Well, I, I think a lot of it really comes from... Uh, well, it, it, is, it, it's, it, it, it was so novel. It was so scary. It was the fact that in the time we didn't know what it was. And also, there's this um, distrust in places like South Africa, Western white medicine, and this kind of created almost a perfect storm for a short time. But when we got more and more information, that kind of died away. But unfortunately, with the internet, we now have these little uh, echo chambers where these people exist, and it's 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 really sad. They're still there to this day. Ah, this is the one you pointed out in your video that when you actually see the test results on the screen. No, no, uh, no, it's not. That was Christine. It's a margin of error. Done. So the reason he doesn't think it's worth doing is something completely different to his accuracy. Maybe it's a good idea to actually have multiple tests of various different kinds so you can actually find out if someone's fucking got the disease. But that's what they are both saying. I want to fucking kick his smug face. There is something about him, he does look very punchable. This is another one that's, uh, and I have to be careful here because his w wife um, has came after me a few times and has baited me to slander her and him and then tried to get, like, was hoping then she could sue me. Um, but essentially, he got tested positive, uh, they banned him from it, and then he came back saying, listen, I've got these HIV tests, they're all negative. And they were like, oh, that's absolutely fantastic, that's great news. You'll have to do it again in front of us. And then he was like, uh, no, you're all right. And he died in 2013, I think. Oh, well, there goes my Rocky Five joke. <laughs> I, I don't understand why it would be such an issue that they would want to maybe double check and make absolutely sure that the tests he got done are accurate. Like, I think it comes from uh, people not understanding the lingo. So as like a scientist, I I can't say something 100% is going to happen. Even something that I'm fairly sure it will be so improbable that it wouldn't happen. But I have to use that language because I want to be accurate. But someone who doesn't know uh, like stuff that I do, it may come across as I'm being a bit wishy-washy. And the person who knows little can say like, oh no, 100%, that's good. And they sound really strong compared to me even though they will be wrong.
Yeah, it's layman abusing scientific knowledge. It's the whole fucking, it's just a theory quote. Yeah, it's just public in general. They always, they just want some, a cold hard fact. Have you noticed there that he interchanged, oh, here she is, Christine. Uh, she, she, he interchanged AIDS and HIV there. And is that kind of common tactic in this? Oh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, incredibly, yeah, he does it all the time. Because to so them, it's have, the same uh, fucking Chris thing. Here we have Christine and her fibbing tests. So uh, let's talk about these. So that's a recently uh, someone who's been recently uh, been infected with HIV. Because it's not a full screened yet. Full showing, sorry. Do you notice that they cut off just before he explained how you determine a false positive? Yeah. Uh, so you missed the uh, exact same results, just someone using common language. Uh, then we have uh, a year and a half after the first one, Fibber. And then we have, oh, this is one where she went back in time. And then she went forward in time as a confirmation of her third test. What's interesting as well, in the fourth test, I don't really bring this up a lot, but it really looks like it's been doctored. Uh, it looks like there's an obvious cut, and there isn't hardly any information. Right? We, it could, she could have had a false negative. We don't know. But she's lying about the dates. Uh, she did on her website, and she promoted this idea. And this just proves <laughs> completely that, that she was doing this. In fact, if they never put this in this documentary, I don't think many people would, be, like, um, would know about this. And her and her organization helped prevent 50 mothers from getting their children uh, HIV tested. It's fucking horrific. This idea that, oh, I'm against mandatory testing for a disease. Uh, why? People might fucking need that test done. It's the same way that uh, women over a certain age are generally asked by their GP to, you know, have certain tests done to check for breast cancer. Because they're the higher risk, and it's something they may not catch themselves. It's kind of weird, it's kind of a mirror of how anti vax let's say an anti-vaxxer, they, they don't want mandatory vaccines and there's a real chance of them dying. And so it's like, you know, if you're against mandatory HIV, even if there wasn't, what have you got to lose if you don't believe HIV exists? Oh, so they think, um, and then we wrong i mandatory uh testing i am not sure that's a good idea but they believe that if you take the test and it comes back positive you're then almost enrolled in this, this conspiracy to then take drugs which gives you the aids like symptoms and then you continue going on consuming these drugs until eventually you die this is what these people believe and that's why they think you should stay away from the tests oh uh, so it's big pharma again basically yeah, but it goes on much more than that. And we're also worried that if they were to test positive, then, of course, if they have kids or a spouse, they would have to, by law, uh, let them know or, or, or tell them or get them tested. And if they don't do that, they can risk having their kids taken away from them. So it, 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 this is what they're worried about. See, this is an interesting thing as well. They're mixing up here, like, tests that we can do in a lab and then the, the test on the street. They're very, very different things. Just because, let's say, if one is fucked, let's say we've got a shitty test on the streets that we're using, that's still shitty. Doesn't mean that what's been done in HIV research labs is also oh. shitty. This guy is one of the um, mass murderers of the past 20 years, President Mumbeki. And he was in charge of South Africa back in the day, and he made it very difficult for people to get hold of antiviral medication, um, would have stopped the uh, transmission of HIV from mother to child. And it's estimated that 300,000 people died, and I think it's another 300,000 were purposely, uh, not purposely, were unnecessarily infected. 
history is definitely going to remember him as a mass murderer by proxy. And in fact, he was persuaded by people like uh, Peter Duisberg, who's also in this movie. Uh, he was one of the guys who did it. So he, these people very much have blood on their hands. And the fact that this movie is trying to portray them as fucking heroes is disgusting. Yeah, because I've heard some scary things about some um, people Tabo and Becky put in the health system, you know, like as ministers and all that. And I can't remember. Oh, yeah, they, they're all woos. Yeah, there's one who believes that, I uh, said, if you, if you drink a garlic water solution after sex, you're okay from AIDS and all this. I've not heard that one. That's new to me. Oh, dear God, no. But I do remember, is it Jacob Zuma, the current president he was in a sex scandal and he apparently had sex with an hiv infected woman and they said what did he do as protection afterwards he said i had to shower after having sex with her hmm. and that's why you start doing education programs so people can actually point out the fucking risks and what preventative measures actually work well there's Really, only one preventive measure from HIV regarding sex, um, but there are different things that you can do that can increase your risk, and depending on your your, your sexual preference and what sex you are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that, but like, if you just have misinformation and bullshit out there, then people are gonna think that hey, having a shower is gonna fix it, as opposed to you know, wearing a condom, taking any other necessary precautions that may be required. side story and this is from a south african friend and she actually saw this that one of the anti-aids initiatives there they were giving out leaflets with condoms but they stapled the condoms to the leaflet someone i've heard a shit like that happening before and here we're going into the big nasty conspiracy where it's all about money just go on today. Carry on, my. I was going to say the thing is, um, you can tell. I, I don't know if it's just because being a YouTuber, you can tell harsh edits. You can tell where something doesn't quite fit, even though I, I don't know if it's that's just something that just it comes with being a YouTuber. But you can tell that these people aren't, for the majority of them, actually, you know, they're telling the truth. It's just been taken completely out of context. And we'll see later on, there are times where they've edited people mid-sentence to say, to change the, the definition of what they're saying, the well, meaning of what they're saying. You can actually and see the jump why. cut. You can actually see a jump oh, cut. I'll show, you, I'll show you where it is. So when it happens, I'll tell everyone to be quiet and I'll show you. Like a good way of showing it is where they needlessly cut to something whilst they're talking midway, which you really don't need to explain what is going on. That's like jump cut heaven. Yeah, because I remember Potholer did a good video about this, like the editing techniques and how to spot them a mile away. Oh, that's what the movie's called. <laughs> Sorry. Roll credits. Oh, fuck off, W. You know, it'll be interesting. I think I might go back, see who's in this movie, and see... Uh, this isn't anything to do with Bush, by the way. Who's actually died uh, before its release and since then? Because there was at least three people, including Christine, who died well before this documentary was released. Oh, Montanay! Yeah, here he is. He's not dead. Is he one of the good guys? Yes, he is. He was one of the uh, people who uh, linked AIDS to a novel virus. He's also quite insane. In a good way, though. Nah, he's pretty, pretty mad. Pretty, pretty crazy. God, I've had wet farts with more charisma than this fucker. She's 
just wondering, do they try and go down all their trying to get everyone to wear condoms to reduce the population line here? No, they don't. They try and get people not to wear condoms. Look how immature this fucker is. And this here, uh, AIDS use condoms for safe sex. It's it's almost saying to you, don't use them. It's it's useless. And this he's the only stupid pe person to, who would actually say it as well. Oh, you also had the Catholic Church who floated around Africa saying like, oh no, it, it totally doesn't actually help. Despite the, you know, scientific consensus that it does. Because in our old book, it says it can't, so meh. And didn't Liam just say there that that their study showed that nobody contracted AIDS? Well, in fact, in their study, they did find transmission. Um, it's, in a... it, it's complicated. So, uh, I got this slightly wrong in my video. Uh, in the beginning, it, it screened a load of people. But it definitely, like said, you know, these people unfortunately get, got HIV from their partner. Uh, but later on, it basically, it wasn't a paper to look at transmission. It was a paper to find out if you could stop the transmi transmission of HIV through education. So in this study, it took about 200, 200 couples where one of them was HIV positive, And it said, listen, uh, we will give you counseling. We will give you an 800 number or the American equivalent. You can ring up any time you want and you can talk to a doctor. Every couple of weeks, you can have a meeting with other people who are in this group to talk about how hard it is to have a partner with HIV, HIV who's HIV positive. Uh, we can talk about safe sex. We can give you condoms. And we can see if that's going to stop the transmission of HIV. And it did. Education is a fantastic way of stopping HIV as well as having access to things like condoms, knowing that certain types of sexual um, uh, contact will have increased risks. Um, and she is correct as well when she said that um, HIV is a very difficult virus to transmit. It is very difficult compared to other ST STIs, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. And this is what Liam was getting at. Liam was trying to say that, oh, this, this one paper said that, like, we didn't find anyone who trans who's, who jumped the partner. And he's, yeah, it's, it's just, I, yeah, I just want to punch him so much. Sorry. I think it's more because, like a lot of STIs, it can be transmitted view, uh, mostly through uh, blood transfusion. Uh, you know, tearing, shit like that, causing blood and causing bodily fluids to mix straight into the bloodstream. And it's, yeah, difficult to happen, but... Oh, oh no, hey. there are other ways of getting, uh, it's not just cuts and tears. Oh, no, no, I know that, but that's like one of the big risks. That's the same. Oh, this is interesting as well. Uh, this is when it was first uh, released, so we should listen to this. James, do you want to talk about why everyone hates Gallo? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically, he he in effect stole the virus from Montenegro's group, um, and then tried to purify it and do things like that. He 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 did some very important work. Um, he wasn't given the Nobel Prize for it though, because of this whole. Uh, criticism and controversy that happened around it. Basically, uh, Montenegro sent him a sample that uh, did contain the virus from some cell work they were doing and Gallo was able to get it out and amplify it. And I think I think they had a, a novel way of amplifying the virus, a novel cell line. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit of a dick move. Sad and the music.
disagreement of or disagreeing opinions that doesn't negate the fucking Nope. No, no, no. Bollocks. Bollocks. Bullshit. This sounds awfully like the intelligent design stuff coming up. Oh, th there's all these scientists that say this. Point them out. Uh, this one? Discredited. This one? Doesn't actually have a doctrine. This one? Fuck up. That's the only criticism of this movie, uh, like, counter thing that you ever see. That's it. Can I say as well, how much I love this couple? They're like purified Canadian. Like, if you could concentrate it down, it's adorable. So what exactly is a cofactor? Just I'm a bit lost with that. It's a buzzword they're using here. It's not to cast doubt on things. For example, like uh, the stuff I work on, pseudomonas. You could say a cofactor is the patient's immune system. So if you have cystic fibrosis, that could be a cofactor in your infection with Pseudomonas originosa. If you're a normal healthy person, you shouldn't get Pseudomonas originosa infections unless you have like a burn wound or something horrific like that. I love this guy. He's got, oh, he's got. Dr. Hans Gelderblum. He's the guy with yeah, the he's bow tie. Amazing. He's the most patient man you will ever see on the internet. He actually, he was one of the few ones where they released the full um, uh, interview online, the House of Numbers crew, and it just shows for about an hour, Brent trying to get him to trip up, and the lovely Dr. Hans Gelderblum was just very patient, just kept correcting him every time, and they, and they still quote mind him, and then chopped his quote up as well. I think that's just the height of scumbaggery in documentaries like this, is, hey, we couldn't get them to say what we wanted so we could get a proper quote mind, let's just cut and chop so we can get something that is the semblance of one. The worst thing is, they, like, they must know. You see, I hate this as well. I hate the conspiracy theorists. You know, they need pictures of things. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't exist. Because any kind of evidence that is just beyond their grasp of understanding is just thrown out. And then in this documentary, even when they get it, they ignore it. Oh, and here as well. At this bit, Dr. Hans Gelderblum is talking about a paper, one of the first papers that came out about HIV. And he's talking about how the images were really kind of small and they didn't show much structure. Uh, they just looked pretty and it was kind of a novel technique at the time. He's not saying that these pictures were crap. Wait, he's the... There, there's the edit. So, right there. Ah, oh, fuck, fuck her. Exactly. So it just it just absolutely derailed everything there. So it's saying, oh, well, I need to find a picture, and then when they do, they say, oh, well, it's one thing to look like this; it's another thing to actually be a virus. So it's like there's no point of that. But where be you saw... deflated five minutes of your life. Yeah, completely. But where you saw the cut there, where you had um, the images of HIV being shown as Dr. Hans Gelderman was talking, 
that is where the edit happened. They chopped him midway. He actually was talking about uh, the initial original images that they published in the 80s. By the way, what's this Perth creeper I keep hearing about? Because in the comment section... It's two people. It's uh, Ellen Popolomidis and Val Tur Dr. Val Turner, I believe. Um, Ellen Popolomidis was chucked out of court by a judge when the judge worked out that she had absolutely no expertise or any credentials to be talking about HIV and its existence. I uh, love the way she story. slapped her down as well. <laughs> it was brilliant. Yeah. A funny story, that happened because of the, a guy I currently work with, uh, who used to work for an HIV charity, um, was he also wrote one of the web pages for ha proof that HIV leads to AIDS. Um, he was on a forum and found one of these people talking about how HIV doesn't exist or AIDS doesn't isn't the cause of AIDS. And he started a sort of a chain network to his boss and his boss, and it went up the chain and eventually it landed on the desk of uh, Gallo. And Gallo then flew out to Australia to present evidence that HIV exists in this trial where someone was trying to, to say they can't have caused grievous bodily harm by knowingly infecting someone with HIV because HIV doesn't exist. That is fucking brilliant. Yeah, it's just because... Um, you, you know Abby Smith, don't you? You've heard the name Abby Smith. It's just we interviewed her way back and we still get comments from people say, demanding that she go and debate the Perth group. And we're always just... What are you talking? We don't know what you're on about. I'd the, just like to the, take a point. Joking. Like, they quote the BBC articles. Um, the BBC, it's kind of hit and miss when it comes to science on certain things. It'll just go... Shut up, man! Shut up, man! Okay. Sorry, <laughs> in joke. <laughs> No, it's just um with the BBC, like whenever the Large Hadron Collider had that misresult about a possible faster than light particle, they put it up as absolute fact with no mention of the fact that they were actually retesting it. The BBC jumps the bandwagon a lot. I, well, I think when it it's just a um, the modern day now where getting content out there is more important than being actually factually correct and driving views, which that's what the BBC do now because. I think like a third of their views and everything now is online. Yeah, because the scary thing watching this document, I'm seeing a lot of parallels between this and what's happening with Zika at the moment. Oh, fucking Zika. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Yes, they fucking can. Yes, it does, you dopey looking cunt. Just because you don't want to admit it doesn't mean it's not there. Okay. So, no fucking indication of what he was talking about to make him change his mind. The bird just got really lazy with the jump cuts here. No, it would have been so obvious he was doing it that he had to put that in. But I just took it, they, could, they might as well just said, here's a jump cut, rather than oh, five minutes later. It's, it's all they fucking did. And no context given about what he was saying. Oh, yeah. no, sunset even, like, before that. It, it wasn't even the question from the first clip, what led him to the second, and what brought him to the third. It was just clip, black screen. Clip, Can we talk about Chris for a bit? No. The Sorry, the woman who's just on. Um, so, as I said at the beginning, Christine was actually one of the people who unfortunately lost their lives before this documentary was released. One thing it never mentions in this entire documentary is that Christine had a daughter, and she's got a son as well, 
And while she was pregnant with both, she refused to take any antiviral medication, and she also breastfed. Um, now, don't, I don't know. I understand why maybe someone would want to take medication when they're pregnant. You know, it's your body as well. It's up to you. But to risk your child by breastfeeding, even though you know you're HIV positive, like that is in, that's incredibly like immoral, in my opinion. Anyway, so um, she kept going on these radio programs and doing all these shows and doing actual shows with the Foo Fighters who were promoting her, by the way, in the early 2000s. And then, unfortunately, her daughter took ill and then she died of AIDS-related illnesses. Now, what's horrific is that that um, interview that we just saw there, the one that we keep coming back to where she's wearing the purple shirt with kind of greenish, yellowy background, that was done after she lost her daughter of HIV, of AIDS, sorry. Um, she was still promoting the idea. She was still going around. She was still a believer, and she believed it up until she died. And that is very, very important information that should be bang smack right in the middle of this documentary, and it's not there. And it just proves that this Brent is a fucker. Well, of course. I mean, they don't want him to be discredited like he's been trying to do to every fucking scientist in the thing. And uh, didn't she get re her uh, daughter's stat uh, re-examined by a fecking vet who already agreed that AIDS does is not ca is not caused by HIV? Yeah, she got her, her a friend or AIDS nihilist to look at the uh, coroner report. Is that what you call that? I've had a few drinks now. Sorry, autopsy. <laughs> autopsy. And he basically said she died of an amoxicillin reaction. Which, which the only reason it's that she by escaped her, by jail, she didn't. Her autopsy did not show she had an amoxicillin reaction. The only reason she escaped jail as well because of this whole thing was that she actually took her daughter to, uh, like a quack medicine guy, uh, and uh, who basically just like fobbed her off, and he actually lost his license because of it. But if she hadn't have done that, you can pretty much guarantee her son would have been taken away from her and. God knows what would have happened. Everything might have actually worked out for the better. Well, <clears throat> I, I I don't know what their family life was like, so it's kind of, you can't tell. I'm sure oh, that no, I mean, like, was a... She might have taken a different approach. I'm just saying, as a possibility, uh, if things were different, then they'd be different, and possibly for the better, possibly for the worse. And here's where we get... Um, uh, his ideas on what actual um, AIDS is caused by. He thinks it's severe poverty and also drug use in the West that have identical symptoms. Nope. Nope. Although poverty is, of course, bad. Yeah, poverty brings itself a whole host of issues. To say that, hey, we should stop trying to look into AIDS because poverty is retarded. You can work on multiple problems at the same time. Which, if I may just completely talk over this, the fact that it affected such uh, a niche group so explicitly is sadly a good thing because it was in such a small group, it spread so quickly that it became really apparent really fast, which gave them a head start in recognizing it, starting to understand it and work on treatments. If it had have been different groups, it would have taken much longer. So, 
to people that say like, hey, it was because of the lifestyle, and fuck them. Can we talk a bit more about Liam here? Uh, Lee, I've actually read Liam's book, and he talks about this kind of stuff and oh. STDs in the mid '80s and what have you. And he honestly thinks that, um, well, I actually got my housemates to read it out, and he thinks that they, these men were just shagging everyone, but having five dicks in them at the same time, and then fisting each other. That's what he thinks causes AIDS, and it's one of those things where it's so crazy, it's so out there that you know I'm not. Paraphrasing, well, I'm paraphrasing, but you know I'm not making it up. It, it, it's just incredible. Oh, yeah, it's the beyond list. the level of this is bullshit. It's oh, it's bullshit. It's just not. It, it's his bullshit, not yours. I was just about to say there. Oh, is this Liam going into the fisting and poppers territory now? Um. Yeah, it, it kind of does. It, it's. They, they never mention it, but they, 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 how, how can they link the two together? I mean, like AIDS type symptoms, right? Um, are not this, you know, you, if you say, oh, it's, it's, it's because of the lifestyle of just taking a load of drugs and having unprotected sex, you're like, oh, okay, fair enough. And then you go, oh, it's also like extreme poverty. They're identical. And this is what this movie is trying to portray. And at the first hurdle, you'd be like, it's bullshit, son. I think he's mistaking a correlation link with a causation link. There, there is a few STD uh, sites out there that do say that taking anal nitrites or poppers or whatever they're called in the UK may increase your chances of um, being infected with HIV, but it mainly comes down to uh, it buggering up with your blood vessels and stuff. And if you're having unprotected anal sex, then it, the chances of one of those rupturing, and that's basically where it comes from. But it, it, this is what these people jump on. Uh, it's they took a minor link and it's a mountain out of a molehill. The thing is as well, like this would take nothing to, I guess, debunk. You find someone who's got who's HIV positive, who ha who has got full blown AIDS, and then you find them and ask them if they've done poppers. And if you find one that never has, ever, there you go, boom, destroyed. Oh, the funny thing is, I screen captured this, put it into SciFinder. That paper is from 1988. Fucking liar. And in the extended uh, video, he is talking about these images not being fantastic and not what he would like to see. He's on about seeing structure in them. He's not on about pretty pictures. I was just going to ask, does Mike Adams turn up in this one? Uh, nope, I don't think so. Is he an AIDS denialist? Uh, yeah, I would, I would 
bet vast amounts of money on him being an AC nihilist. Well, given Mike Adams also denies germ theory as well, so... It's just a matter of time before he gives up on gravity. But you can forgive him though, can't you? Because he is a fantastic rapper. <laughs> Please don't remind us of that abomination. I went about the G and Mo's in my grocery store. Blah, blah, blah. I will Wait, slap I you across the face. <laughs> they don't want us to know. Just say G. I actually know it. With oh. a hammer. No. Okay, fair enough. If... Bullshit. Just want to say about. I just. Just want to say what God about uh, that researcher there that said that he just doesn't want to race this time isolating the virus. But that's that the, about at that time the virus had been well characterized and studied. There'd be no point for him, career wise, to you know reinvent the wheel. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, if someone's already done the legwork, if you want to progress, you're not just going to start from scratch yourself. You might just look at, oh, well, there's a hundred other people who've gotten all of these exact same results. Maybe I can skip doing this initial stage to work on the next stage, which I have the materials and time to do so. The weird thing as well is that um, these people who say that HIV just doesn't exist, uh, how do they, you know, talk to people who are doing stuff with leukemia at the moment and they're using HIV as a way of uh, treating leukemia? How do they talk to vets? I mean, don't forget, you know, HIV, like, made the zoonosis jump uh, after mutating, and is actually, like, a mutated version of SIV. And then you have, like, uh, FIV, which is the cat version, you have a horse version, you have a goat version, and vets all in this conspiracy as well. Big fuck. It's all part of the conspiracy. I love the fact so, that people say, oh, it's Big Pharma, it's Big Pharma. And they're like, yeah, that's exactly why we have a virus that's really prevalent in a very poor part of the world. It's great business strategy there, guys. There's also, one bit I missed when they're talking about uh, Carposi sarcoma, and they're saying, oh, you know, the, you get patients who, who aren't HIV positive who have uh, KS. KS existed before HIV. It is, it is caused by, I think, by a herpes virus. So it's herpes, it, yeah. Yeah, you're on, you're unlikely to get it if you don't have a weakened immune system. Hence, why it's an indicator of HIV. Um, but yeah, it's not you're not every case is going to have HIV. There are other ways to get it. But to get it, you have to have like a really weakened immune system, right? So normally, you have to be very old or be on chemo or like if you've got uh, well, if you're you all certain cancers, things yeah, like this, yeah. This is an interesting story as well, because these two here, I know we talked over them, but they're talking about their daughter who tested positive for HIV and they put her on the medication and it wasn't fantastic. Again, time frame, we don't... Oh, right, okay, Zygma. Zygma is not... <laughs> Sigma Aldridge is not a fantastic place to get your information from if you're talking about, like, how dangerous something is. You can buy caffeine from Zygma Aldridge. You can buy ethanol. You can buy all sorts and stuff that you, that you digest and stuff that you have probably day to day. And it'll look terrifying. It'll have all the warning labels on and everything. The LD50s. It means nothing. Why did they put a Sigma Aldridge, like, fucking bottle there? If not just to make it sound really scary because it's got the bloody toxic thing on it. Anyway, sorry. Um, the thing about these two is you're not giving enough information about their daughter. They take her off the medication, but you don't know if she's okay now. You, we, we know nothing. And I, I feel like I'm missing something out of this. Uh, I don't know if you guys feel the same.
I'm guessing that would have been during the early days of disease when they didn't understand it completely and were using some experimental drugs. No, well, AZT is a, uh, <coughs> sorry, it was one of the first drugs that they tested out there. It was originally used, I think it was going to be a chemo drug. Um, it's basically a analog of, is it U? Was it T? I can't remember. Um, anyway, only on the, let's see if I can remember this, the three prime, you have an azide group, so three nitrogens, and it basically stops um, addition onto that. Uh, three prime. So if you're reverse transcriptase, you incorporate this molecule as you're growing um, your strand, and it basically stops it from working. Uh, and at the beginning, we uh, we put people on too much, and they were becoming ill. Uh, later on, we we lowered the dose, and then even later on after that, we had the co AIDS cocktail. I mean, they're they're going back to you know mid to late 80s here i like this is another example of them just literally jumping through time to whatever bloody fits them yeah there, there's absolutely no mention of the current therapies at the moment in this uh documentary oh it's coming don't worry that link's been disproven as well it wasn't it wasn't the medication that was killing people being disproven. What with the AZT? That uh, was well, AZT was was dangerous, but the amount of people dying wasn't due to the amount of people taking AZT. I thought that the dose was completely wrong, and then they became ill because of it. Yeah, no, no. What the, what the guy on the screen just said that oh, all the people who died in the eighties from HIV died just because of AZT. It's not. Oh no, it's bollocks out of that shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the, the dose was too high. It was dangerous. There was an increased risk, and it shouldn't have been that high. But the, the definite link saying all these things were caused by AZT is just wrong. Have you heard my theory about the Dallas Buyers Club and AZT? Wait, what's this? They're misrepresenting facts in order to push their own <laughs> agenda? <gasps> so many and so. Sacre bleu. All right, Frenchie. That's unheard of. <laughs> No, because there's still people who had AIDS from that time who are still walking the earth. In Therefore, your documentary. You whole... It's not a chemotherapy drug in the same way that Viagra isn't a heart medication. Ah, oh, Viagra, one of the most useful fuck-ups for old people. It's good for migraine. Sure. <laughs> Is that why you've got it? I feel like I'm being a joke to you today, I'm really sorry. I don't... <laughs> what's, your, what's your username? Oh yeah, uh, well, the people online won't know this, but the, uh, James added me into this conversation as Donkey Wang 45 so thanks, James. <laughs> and then further to that was we added James in under the name I was trying to add Pumpkin under, so it was quite, quite amusing that. So James is I'm a silly Irish twat. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole thing was uh, Pumpkin was asking earlier how to log into the Mumble, so I gave him all the details and I gave him the silly username and Pumpkin ignored it, so I think James just scrolled up the conversation, just took those details and talked about fucking trustworthy. See, we shouldn't have said this now, because whenever we get Buck on in the future, we won't be able to pull the same trick on him. That's true. He doesn't know what information was sorted, so... <laughs> it's not impossible. Right, no. He, they're talking about the AIDS cocktail here, and they're trying desperately hard to put a shadow on it. And we've even got this woman here who was unfortunately misdiagnosed as HIV positive and had to take all this medication. But the fact is, as soon as it got introduced, AIDS deaths, boom, hit the floor. That is undeniable. Like, 
it, the, the graph uh, of people dying of AIDS just goes higher and higher and higher until I think it's what, 1996? And then boom, almost hits the floor. This stuff bloody works. We still have people from, like, as you said before, from around that time walking around now. And the fact that they're trying to cast a shadow on it, this is why this movie um, is the very worst kind of woo, because it, it's, it's a massive public health uh, issue having this movie. It, it's, it's trying to get people to go off the medication. It's trying to get them not to use condoms. People, if they listen to this, are going to fucking die. And the people who made this film are fucking disgusting. Yeah, because even I can remember when AIDS was first getting mentioned that if you caught it, you were just going to be dead in two or three years, whereas now it seems to be somewhat manageable. Uh, The problem nowadays is... Oh, God, I fucking hate Liam Sheff. God, he just... I want to punch my screen. Uh, The problem... Oh, this is an interesting story. Uh, Wait. Why do I get the feeling? Guy's a fucking moron. No, but with all these scientific terms, you just get the impression he just read them in a dictionary, like just before he went to camera mm. to see it. Or... Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna look real fucking smart, even though I'm a smarmy cunt. There, there is, yeah. Liam is, uh, yeah, he's not not all there. I don't think. Um, what's interesting about this story is that she was actually um, put on a clinical trial to test this drug, um, and I can't remember if she was given slightly too much or no, that was it. She um, she had a bad reaction to it and the doctors didn't click on they were just they daft they just fucked up completely and they kept giving her it and then this reaction got worse and worse and worse and then fortunately she died the interesting thing is in this documentary it even hints at that because they took two doctors exchanging emails <laughs> and in it they say oh uh, nothing we can do about dumb docs uh, so that's going to come up and this essentially is, is a very sad case um but it, it just shows like the need of clinical research and how it needs to be done properly. It, it has nothing to do really with uh, what, well, no, it, they're trying to use it is to push the idea that this AIDS cocktail will make your skin off. That's what they're doing. Yeah. They're fucking spinning and misrepresenting facts because they're oh, sure. bastards. Oh, sure. He, they put, he's, they put up there that he's taken AIDS medication. And then as soon as they finish, they say he'd pass away after the interview. But for Christine and all the other people to, to agree with them, no, that's just left. That shit is left at the end. Yep. The, so they are capable of acknowledging death during the movie at appropriate moments. For Only them. if it works for them. Fucking douchebags. I don't think it's appropriate moments. It's more just opportune moments. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a got my words mixed mis- across there. I think this is what we're going to do when they talk about the emails. See? See what I mean? Nothing to do with the cocktail. It was a cool trial where the people running it fucked up. Oh yeah, before uh, that bit started, I was talking about um, 
uh, AIDS being HIV, sorry, being manageable nowadays, it's actually becoming a bit of a problem with young people. Uh, they seem to think that it, it's not a problem that it won't affect them. They'll just go on this; it'll be fine. It's not really a danger anymore. And so there is actually in the UK uh, a slight increase in um, HIV uh, rates, which is really worrying because these, yeah, these young people don't think it's a problem anymore. She just wants to be a unique, pretty snowflake, and she really is the worst kind of person. The thing is, as well, at the end of my little mini series where I made this, I kept saying, "Why don't these people just who are HIV native fucking infect themselves and see if it's real?" The funny thing is, they actually mention one guy, not in this movie, but Aidan Alice mentioned him. Uh, a guy who did it on camera, who infected himself, and then was like, "See, he lived up until he died." a few weeks later when he got hit by a car. Idiots. Honestly, whenever I see people like this, I'm reminded of a time, I can't remember if it was AIDS denialist or some anti-cancer fucker who was saying that cancer was just some conspiracy, tried setting up shop nearby. And the first person he talked to was someone who had that disease. And knocked the ever loving fuck out of him. And I just wish that would happen more often because, as much as these people think, hey, we're, you know, campaigning to end the conspiracy of AIDS, no, you're fucking causing deaths, you cunt. Well, the, the really horrible thing about it is it's a bit like The Matrix. The same people you're trying to save, I mean, people who say, you know, like us, that HIV totally does exist are the people who are dead against it, are kind of the people in this documentary spreading these horrific ideas. At the end of the day, you know, they may, horrific as it sounds, infect someone else or infect their children, but they are the ones who are going to be suffering. And it, it's truly awful. I mean, it's why Facebook groups like Rethinking AIDS are just so tragic, because the same people who call you everything under the sun, who just want to destroy you, on a career level are the same people you're trying to help oh here we go here's the end at the fucking cemetery again for added dramatic effect i really wish one of them, like a headstone just off left frame fell on the bastard divine intervention i'd fucking start believing I mean, they actually had a screening. These people are crazy as well. They had a screening, and Brent and Liam just chanted down the people who were just like ripping this movie a new one. They, they must know that they're talking bollocks. They must know the fact that they've had to edit things. The fact that they've actually talked to the experts. They know, and they are killing people. They know, as James and said they don't fucking like, care because they're here to promote a message, to push an agenda to fuck with people's shit in order to improve whatever it is they're fighting for. They're a bundle of fucking cunts. Well, I, I, I certainly think people like Liam and Brent are, definitely. Um, there's no getting around it. Other people, I can see them being misled. Uh, I'll maybe just being scared. I mean, I don't know how I'd react if I found out I was HIV positive. I, I, I think I'd be terrified. But people like Brent and Liam and even people like Christine, I I just think are awful. I don't understand how they can go on knowing what they've done and the damage they've caused to humanity. So anyway, that's the end of the film. Did it live up to your expectations, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I want to find all of the people who edited this, uh, the jumpy, twitchy bastard that was on coke, and the fucker that was actually narrating, and kick the shit out of them. Brent is one absolutely horrible bastard for making this movie. Well, it, it, you've got to remember as well, it's not just him. There's a mass, there's not a massive, there's a well-funded um, AIDS denialist movement online that have GHD hair straightener money and have various other millionaires 
helping to fund it. And they still go after people to this day. And what's awful as well is um, the new business model is to set up shop, call themselves, I don't know, AIDS is a myth, LLC, and then just put a load of money in there, put, like, pull out a load of absolute shite, or in the case of what they're doing now, they're actually offering a screening service where they will run uh, electron, uh, whatchamacallits, uh, to try and find HIV in people who are HIV positive. Obviously, they're just going to come back and say, oh, we can't find it, therefore you're not HIV positive. Uh, and what they do is they wait to get sued the living shit out of, and then they just lose all that money, the business goes under, and then they just set up shop again. And they keep doing it over and over and over and over again. And this is why whenever I hear people talking about how Dave Grohl's the best thing since sliced bread, I point out the fact that he was promoting cons like this and say, nope, dude was a dick. Dude no, I do is that. a dick and dude needs to get his shit together. No, I do that as well. Uh, Dave Grohl, head of, uh, you know, head of the Foo Fighters, lead singer of the Foo Fighters and bassist of the of Nirvana. Yeah, he was a massive AIDS denialist. He helped promote the idea in the early 2000s, did uh, shows for Alive and Well with AIDS Alternatives, which is Christine Maggiore's or Majori's organization and they actually put it proudly on the front page of their website and then just quietly got rid of it and they never really bring it up again i mean if i was them i would have to put down my front page saying this is death notice, by the way you just missed the death notice of the three people who made you did die oh no i oh, love yeah. that little last bit that i caught at the end these deaths were unrelated to aids fucking bollocks um, yeah. Certainly for Christine, you, you know, chances are it totally was. <laughs> uh, I mean, she had uh, pneumonia. Yeah. Uh, but I was to say, yeah, Dev Grohl, everyone says, oh, he's the nicest guy in rock. And you just think, well, no, you, <laughs> the guy as well has done a lot of damage. A lot of damage. And that, he, that will never wash off. He is, in fact, a testicle. I view it the same way as Michael Jackson. Good music. Don't want to leave my kids with them. Okay, uh, I think we can start wrapping up. Just get the final, final thoughts there. So, Kitch, I'll go to you first. Yeah, this movie is absolutely dangerous. It's dishonest. It's crap. It's... I can't literally think of anything good to say about it. Like, usually, even in some of the most bad pseudoscience films you can usually point out something good like the editing the music you know there's usually something good but this is just it's just awful pumpkin um this was everything i feared it would be it's a dangerous method uh, or a dangerous message that's being passed on by people who have been affected by it after its release and some before it was actually published the fact that these motherfuckers think that hey we can just keep promoting this message despite the overwhelming evidence that everyone is fucking everyone who takes on board is starting to die off it, it enrages me to fucking unparalleled degrees and i fucking hate everyone who had anything to do with this fucking thing and we'll go to our guests miles Hey, I'm before James. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like the final word, fucker. Oh, damn it! Damn it! Oh, well. Okay, um, I haven't seen that movie in about two years now, and it's still... Um, it really upsets me. Upsets me. Um, it, it is incredibly dangerous, and it is, it is a country mile more dangerous than any other film that I've seen, because... And it, it it goes that extra mile. It doesn't just say HIV is a load of useless, a uh, load of bollocks, sorry. And what we think about it is a load of bollocks. It goes further to say, don't wear condoms because HIV isn't a thing. It goes further saying you shouldn't take these antiviral medications, even though it didn't flat out say that. It's totally implying that because they're dangerous. It is a public health danger, and the people who made this, who blooming know that they're lying. Um, I I don't know how they live with themselves. Now, I'm not one of these people who um, who gets enraged easily. I'm not one of these people who says things that, you know, oh, these bastards, but how do they do this? I actually mean this. I mean, I don't know how they live with themselves because if I was attached to this project, 
And I wasn't one of these poor people who've been misled by AIDS and illness and actually thinking that it was a thing. I would, I, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't know what to do. And it, it, it's horrific. And I, I think that we definitely need to bring more attention to this because it, they, even though the AIDS denialist movement, especially in the West, has died out quite considerably because a lot of them have died um, and the organization hasn't got the oath before, these people are now going after people online. And when you're attached to everyone in the world, it's easier to find Mr. and Mrs. Yada Yada from wherever and then get them uh, to believe this crap. So I, I think we need to really knuckle down and concentrate on this very, very dangerous part of the internet. Wonderful. And, and saving the best for last, James. So, yeah, I, I agree with what Miles said there. Um, the one thing I would have liked to say, so when we, there's a plug coming up here, when we did our interview on HIV deniers on the League of Nerds, .co.uk, check it out. Um, nice. We, yeah. <laughs> We kept going up with, uh, you know, providing evidence for this person who was a un, uneducated in the, in the ways of microbiology or anything like that. And what I would have liked to say now, reflecting back on almost like a year ago that it was, when, when scientists have an idea, we don't just stop and say, oh, look, it's the virus. Isn't that cool? Even if we, even if we just had like a computer image, which is what the guy was suggesting was all we had, all that would do is inform us about how we can test it further, how we can examine it, how we can pull apart the weaknesses and actually find what's really going on. The, the HIV deniers community relies on the fact that people don't understand just how multidisciplinary and vast research actually is. They think, you know, if you watch this, you might think it's what, 20, 20 scientists around the world maybe working on this and 20 people worth listening to. Bollocks. There's hundreds and hundreds of groups with, you know, multiple people working at each of them, each trying to pull the other group's shit apart. <sighs> Aside from all the, the humanitarian crisis that's, you know, the, what was it, 30,000 or 300,000 people in, who died in South Africa as a direct... 300,000. Yeah, direct link to HIV denialism. This sort of contrarianism and denialism has other implications for all other reaches of science and society. Without people standing up to this bullshit and pointing out, actually, you know what, this is dangerous and you're wrong. Like we're seeing it at the moment with the Zika virus, where uh, it was a Brazil just banned that pesticide based on the bogus report from a bunch of anti-GMO people. People are probably going to die because of that. Children are going to be maimed because of that because people don't trust and don't understand how research and science works. So uh, I, I, I take a slightly different approach when, when we talk about these people who are HIV positive. I don't, I don't think the dicks or twats or, you know, we can call them all sorts of names under the sun and stuff, but end of the day, they're scared and they've been misled and we're not doing our job right if that, those people exist. We're not doing the best we can to stop people from being afraid and being preyed upon by charlatans. Okay, thanks for that. Um, and thank you all for coming along. Thank you, Miles and James, for joining in. Hope you enjoyed it in some weird, perverse way. Yeah, we know me. <laughs> yeah. I like to get angry. <laughs> okay, as, as you always check them out, League of Nerds, it's always a pleasure having you guys along. And we'll see everyone again very soon. See us. Bye. Cool, that was pretty good.